What's up fellow gamers, Freak here, and it's patch 10.10, .10, which is going to be fun, let's talk about it. Uh, one thing to point out is that, as has been sort of an ongoing trend for the last several patches, is there haven't been any moderate skill reworks in kind of a while, so they're all pretty small, aimed at like 1 to 1.5% 1 win rate change changes, some are going to be less than that, but that's generally been the trend. Um, so, you know, we'll talk about what we have, but, you know, it's going to be kind of another probably somewhat short video because there's only so much going on, but there's fun things to talk about. And if there's space to ramble, I will because these are a bit shorter than normal videos. So patch 10.10 is coming out. Exciting stuff. Here's the quick list of buffs and nerfs. Cool. Um, those are indeed buffs. Those are indeed nerfs. Let's go in and talk about them as we see fit. Uh, one thing I am including here, by the way, is for every champion that... Um, I have a data table for, I quickly wrote down their win rate in plat plus solo queue and the most popular role according to lolalytics.com. Uh, so for the ones that don't have math, uh, like Udyr and Maokai, I didn't look those up because I didn't have a place to store them. Probably could do the rest, I just didn't. Anyway, let's talk about what we've got right here. So, uh, Annie has a pretty small buff to the tune of 3 to 7% more damage reduction on her E. Now, damage reduction as a mechanic, uh, the more you have of it, the more any one individual sort of point matters. Uh, so, you know, that's something to kind of consider is that like, hey, um, this is not only is it 7% a bigger percent than 3% at rank 5 is rank 1, but also going from 22 to 25 means more than going from 10 to 13. Uh, and obviously, it's 22 to 29, so it's even more than that. Uh, so we'll have that in the math right there. Uh, in addition, Tibbers is going to have twice the aura damage. It's worth pointing out, by the way, that Tibbers' AP ratio is incredibly, incredibly high uh, compared to the base damage of the aura. Uh, what this basically means is um, if you're doing some kind of tank anti build for some reason and you're keeping Tibbers up for a very long time, you're actually missing out on a lot of damage. Um, the more glass cannon you go as Annie, uh, the more the aura damage matters. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting to note, just in general, having an ability that doubles the ulti damage at only 200 AP is unheard of, outside of Elise, whose ultimate is not really an ultimate. Um, it's still in a pretty good spot, where it only takes 300 and something to get there. Uh, this is still incredibly, incredibly high, so uh, for what it's worth, if you are in a game state where uh, Tyrus is dying right away, you're not getting much value of the AP, or vice versa, if you're getting a lot of value out of the aura, you really want to build on the AP. So here's the damage reduction before and after. Um, so it's it's how much damage have you taken in actual um, sort of, you know, game terms. So yeah, you take 3% less damage um, going from 10 to 13. There's some rounding there. It's not exactly 3%. It's a bit more than 3%. But you can see at the very bottom here that having a 7% more damage reduction is taking 9% less damage with max rank of the ability. Um, honestly, 29% damage reduction is pretty solid. This is going to be the equivalent of about 40-something. It's about 43 uh, magic resist, and uh, probably more like maybe closer to like 50 or 50 something armor. So, this is actually a pretty good amount of durability. I actually realized as I was recording this that like it wouldn't have been that hard to put this into um, armor and MR terms to get kind of a different perspective on how good this ability is. Uh, but it is a non trivial amount of durability. It's still worth pointing out that because it's damage reduction, it, it, um, it is beneficial, or at least it's not hampered, by you buying a Zonia's or a Banshee's Veil, whereas if it was flat armor MR, uh, it would be somewhat depreciated if you had bought other armor and magic resist. Um, so obviously if you buy health, it's as good. If you buy armor and MR, it's as good. Um, so this allows you to like, th this is the kind of buff that does help you play tank Annie a little bit. Not that you're really going to, but those kinds of ideas uh, can happen. Um, here's the uh, R damage. It is just strictly doubled as far as the aura damage is concerned, which is fine. The ratio is 20% higher. Uh, so it's going a little bit away from absurdly high ratio for the base damage, but uh, ultimately still, 40 damage per second is not very high. Um, yes, theoretically, you can get, you know, 600 or something damage out of Tibbers in this kind of case, but that's a little bit unrealistic. Now that it should be Chaos Storm level damage anyway, because it already has some upfront burst damage. It can stun, it can do all these other things. It can punch, which is some damage as well, but... Um, the aura is still not going to be that incredible. It's just going to add up a little bit. So next up is, and oh yeah, by the way, Annie had a 51.5% uh, win rate uh, in mid lane. So um, not overpowered, but certainly decent. Um, so, you know, a little weird to see a fairly high win rate champion get a buff here, but 
whatever, it's not a huge problem. Uh, so next up is Diana, who's losing 24 health and a fraction of a fraction of an attack damage. So really only doing the health here. Uh, very high win rate champion, by the way, 53.1% is quite high. Uh, goes down to below 2200 health now, which is something. But yeah, overall, this is a champion who, keep in mind, has bonus health in her kit via the fact that she shields herself. Uh, usually several times in a fight, so the raw value of 24 health is a little bit lower than you would expect um, for any other champion, like, say, Annie. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be more for early game, obviously, as we can see right here. Uh, she has 24 less health at all times. This is a champion who tends to build a bit of durability, right? Is going to have a Zonius probably in that build somewhere. Doesn't mind getting a Banshee's Veil at some point. Uh, but also builds raw HP. Like, Rod of Ages is not unheard of in this build. So that is another thing that will slightly devalue um, what a health nerf would do. Overall, um, end of the day, this champion is not going to lose very much here. It's it's gonna matter like like don't you know don't look at this and be like oh what what a terrible nerf it does nothing it's, no I mean twenty four health matters right like this will be one ish percent win rate as most of these changes are going to be it's decent. The next up is Aurelia who is getting ten to thirty more damage on flawless duet and uh, here is the win rate here is the data table definitely low win rate champion to be fair Aurelia has been like an incredibly high pick and ban rate champion both in solo queue and pro with win rates this low before. Um, I am still kind of pleased that we are in a state where Aurelia is able to slightly creep up in win rate to higher than she was back in the day, while still not being super absurd for the most players. Uh, I didn't look up her ban rate, pick rate data, but I mean, it doesn't seem to be a huge problem for people. Uh, but this is a solid little bit of damage. This thing only scales off AP, so the base damage is going to stay this way forever. You max it second, so the fact that there's, uh, you know, 30 damage as you rank it up uh, is pretty relevant here as well. So you're going to get some value out of that uh, before too terribly long. And yeah, it does, you know, 14-ish percent more damage. Um, this helps a little bit with wave clear. This can help you get to some some wave clear breakpoints. You can, you know, crash the mini wave a little bit sooner. Once in a while, it's going to happen. Um, sometimes that 30 damage can help mean lethal in a duel. Uh, but yeah, a nice little small buff right here. Again, probably 1% or so, maybe a little bit less. Uh, but, you know, small uptick to Aurelia getting to 48% wouldn't be a bad thing. Next up, Katarina loses some AP ratio on her passive daggers, which is anytime she walks to pick up the dagger, she does the spin. Uh, that is that damage right there. Uh, worth pointing out that Katarina, not only is she high win rate, this ability has a base damage, it has a bonus AD ratio, and it has an AP ratio. Um, the base damage scales with character level, the bonus AD scales with buying Gunblade, and that's it. So it's just some more base damage, and then the AP ratio in itself. So um, what I chose here, this is not very scientific. I could have done a slightly more uh, robust thing here, but essentially the AP ratio nerfs uh, at 6, 11, and 16. Um, so there you go. There's there's the AP ratio difference right there in that data table. And I said, okay, since the base damage wasn't changed, exactly how much does this matter? Now, I did not include Gunblade's bonus AD as part of the base damage here, even though she's going to buy that item almost every single time. That said, if you have 200 AP and no other sources of base damage, uh, it is a nerf to, once you're in the mid to late game, you know, 3 to 5% of the damage. So every, every 200 AP is roughly that much. Now, again, this is shrunk a little bit. Um, or I guess, you know, this is shrunk a little bit. The nerf is less severe with things like Gunblade, where the base damage is even further elevated. Thus, the percentage drop is not as high. But yeah, you're still getting 0.04, um, 0.12, point, or yeah, I, you can see it here, right? 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 0 0.12 on the AP ratio. So uh, every 100 AP is 12 damage. Um, it's not a ton, but you'd get a couple of resets per fight. It's going to add up a little bit. Um, it is some damage. Um, this is a fairly small nerf. Katarina will still be pretty high winner overall, but uh, also worth pointing out, Katarina is one of the most mastered champions in League of Legends. Um, very high um, like rate of, of if people are playing Katarina, it's because they're Katarina experts, so that does elevate the win rate somewhat, but at the end of the day, if she's common enough, if she's getting, if I mean, she's objectively this good in those players' hands, uh, and that is very, very high. Um, one, one thing I want to kind of reiterate here is it does not matter how theoretically balanced the champions are what matters is the games people are playing like that is what actually matters which means that league could change in in no gameplay terms at all and five years later have an entirely different cast of op champions because of the ones that get played and mastered and whatnot and they're the ones who are frustrating that's just the way things work um katarina hasn't had large mechanical changes in um a good like six years or something like the cat rework is pretty old um i want to say at this point and at the end of the day it it is relevant that um if she is frustrating and oppressive and too strong because people have gotten good at her 
she is frustrating and too strong and oppressive. Like, that is just a fact. The, the, the cause being people are good at her doesn't matter if that's the cause or not. She is now too strong um, in the average game of League of Legends. That's just the state we're in. So I support nerfs to things like Katarina as I support things, nerfs to things like Nami and Riven and whatnot because, well, at the end of the day, this is the game people are experiencing regardless of the cause. Uh, next up is a buff, well, sorry, a nerf, rather, to Kane, who had gotten several buffs. The last round of buffs was absurd. Um, his most popular role is still jungle. I didn't actually look at top lane, but I know top lane gained a fair bit. Um, ultimately, I know that Riot actually tracks um, blue Kane versus red Kane win rates, so they actually know which one's outperforming which one. Uh, and by how much, and, you know, that's why a lot of times you were seeing, like, blue cane buffs. But at the end of the day, average cane overall, just cane in general, is winning a crap ton of games. You can see the win rate, right, 52.6% is very, very, very high. And that includes games that are playing the slightly weaker blue cane. Um, which means red cane is just even better than that, right? Red cane, is de red cane is definitely outstanding, definitely very, very strong. So, yeah, Assassin's in the right spot. Ross is a bit too much. So, nerfing some utility specifically on that side. And it's the special healing on his red cane passive. Here is the healing gained before and after. It's down 10-ish percent. Obviously, you don't get this in the first four levels. So, like, this part is irrelevant. So, the, the, the brunt of the nerf is actually never really seen. Um, it's, it's you know, this part that matters. And it's it's 10 to 7% less healing. Um, and that is not irrelevant. That certainly matters. 10% um, less healing is, is pretty meaningful, right? So uh, this is going to be felt to some degree. Small hit to, to Red Cane. Still be very, very strong. Next up, pretty big nerf to Kled. Kled is another overperformer. This one definitely has been good for a very long time in top lane. Really hasn't seen a lot of pro play, but I think he's very good. Um, and it's a pretty meaningful 2 to 0 seconds nerf on Bear Chop on a Rope. Yeah, very high win rate, right? 53 and change is very, very good. Uh, obviously the nerf balances out by level 9, but you're going to really feel this in the early laning phase. Like, this is going to, uh, since he generally tends to be somewhat of a lane bully, um, you can't spam Q for the poke quite as much. If you're having a hard time, you can't spam Q for the wave quick quite as much. Um, in general, I'm generally happy in a spot, um, where we don't have fractions in cooldowns or damages or percentages or whatever. I feel like if you need to scale at 2.5%, you probably could have scaled at 2 or 3%, would have been fine. Um... I understand why half-second cooldowns exist, right? If you want to end at 7, you really don't want to have to start at 11. I get that, but in general, we're here and I'm, I'm happy about it. So yeah, le less oppressive early game. Cool stuff. Happy about it. Let's go. Um, again, another 1-ish percent win rate. Like th This is like the goal of all the changes. I know I felt like I sound like kind of a broken record because I've said this to almost every change for the last like four patch rundowns. These changes are all aimed at being about 1% win rate. Like, by design. They're like, no, we're just... This this guy is, like, a little bit overtuned. So just get him below 53%, and then, hey, 52 is fine. Right? Because it's not like this is a champion where it's like, oh, they're 99% pick and ban rate, and they're 53% win rate, and they're 100% presence in pro. And it's like, no, no, no. They're just, like, slightly too good in plat plus. Like, they're just... It's just... Quick love tap down, right? Um... The same thing for Love Taps Up, right? They're like, hey, this champion is a little bit on the low side. It is a little bit of, you know, we're not trying to make Sivir the number 180 carry. Just like, hey, she's a bit stronger now. So, you know, I tend to be a fan. Um, and what's funny is, um, so I like this approach a lot because this basically, I'm going to sit here and ramble for a little bit. So um, it really seems to only take the extremes where they're, they're too bad or too good and go, and you're here. Right? Which means, by definition, these kinds of changes can never bring a champion 53 to 47 because they're only ever aiming at 1%. Even if they overshoot by double, they go to 51 and they're still stronger than the average champion in solo queue. Um, and similarly, for the bottom side, unless they're, you know, electing to pick things and bring them up, you know, on their own, uh, they can never have a situation where the champion was dog poop and is suddenly the best champion in the game. By design, they're only ever hitting small changes. Um, and so if they just keep kind of you know, love tapping the edges in towards the middle every patch. And it's like, oh, here's the next six outliers. Here's the next six outliers. Here's the next six outliers. Um, I think it's solid, right? It it guarantees you get some some changes, which is cool. Like, just, just like, I know I said this, I think, like, two, three years ago in a patch rundown. Like, hey, what if Riot just always automatically took the bottom six champions that here's a 1% win rate buff and the top six champions that here's an automatic 1% win rate nerf? Um, that's basically what the Oracle is doing, but they're just kind of using um, win rate cutoffs instead of top six, bottom six, which is fine. That's probably a better version anyway. Um, but yeah, the, the, here's, here's a mandatory 12 changes per patch, um, because this was overperforming, this was underperforming, 
let's send him in towards the middle a little bit, I think is a positive, right? And then you see where things shake up afterwards. You see what, what happens. I think it's a positive thing. Um, and yeah, we're not seeing any large scale reworks anytime. Um, well, uh, uh, Volavero is going to be in two weeks, which will be exciting uh, from what I can tell. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the next major update is going to be preseason. Probably, probably that'll be fun uh, whenever that comes through. But that's still obviously a while, a while away, a good like six months. But um, that'll be fun uh, down the line. But I'm just kind of, you know, I'm waiting for the big things to, to, to sink my teeth into and, and chew on for a bit. But we're not there yet. Uh, all right. But yeah, again, 1% win rate. Great. Misfortune, uh, definitely very, very strong champion. One I like to gain ELO with. Um, they are nerfing Strut's movement speed by a flat 10, uh, which, you know, technically the more points are into it, the less it matters. Uh, I'm pretty sure that high level strut with boots gets into diminishing returns territory in the first place. So um, this kind of stuff is actually even less of a real nerf than it looks on paper because you're only getting 80% or 50% of the move speed gains in the first place. So the plus 10 is actually plus 8 or plus 5 or the minus in similar terms. Um, so, you know, in, in practical movement terms, it can mean even less, but uh, I just don't think it's worth doing the diminishing returns and stuff like this because there's so many other factors. Uh, but that is a real thing. Obviously, MF has a very high win rate, which is very, very successful. Totally deserving of a nerf. Um, and uh, also worth pointing out that this is uh, not counting boots in the data here. So um, the actual difference in um, movement speed is uh, even less of a percentage than before. Sorry, I like my, my brain wandered randomly and we're back there. So the actual meaningful, uh, the actual nerf is, is again less big than this looks but it's pretty small in the first place i'd be shocked this is one percent this is actually very very small uh, okay so next up we have maokai who has the top of top lane but not dramatically so uh 2.28 mana is not going to be mathed out here um 10 mana on bramble smash is a very simple 20 percent yep this is 20 percent more mana cost let's move on nidalee gets a 25% increase to the ability power ratio of Javelin Toss. So uh, the more gold Nidalee gets, the more damage she deals. Again, because this is only 25%, I didn't do any uh, math, but worth noting that, yep, she's going to gain some. Uh, and apparently she was low win rate, so they buffed her. Another champion I don't have any, uh, any numbers written down on. Okay, so here we go to Sivir, and this is an interesting one. So Sivir getting uh, 30 to 10 uh, more mana restored on her E, on Spell Shield. I actually like this a lot. So I'm I'm a big Sivir fan. I like the champion a ton. I really, really like playing her. Um, and I think we're, I think we actually have some really, really exciting numbers here, ultimately. So this is obviously the ability you max last. So if we look at the data table, uh, yeah, right, decent win, right, right. Actually a solid champion. So this is one of the ones where I'm a little surprised there was a buff, but whatever. Um, not, not absurd, but little surprise is all. Uh, but because, again, you max this last, you are getting plus 30 mana per E for the vast majority of the game. Uh, eventually, it goes down to only plus 10, but this is actually a ton of mana, right? This is a really, really meaningful uh, buff where 30 more mana per, per hit is pretty meaningful. Even if you are building Essence Reaver, you can still run out of mana on this champion. If you're spamming, 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 spamming with, with no uh, breaks in between, you can actually oom um yourself. Uh, so getting that 110 back is decent. Essence Reaver, of course, with CDR gets you even more of these spells off. But this is mostly buffed to the early laning phase. This will generally, I mean, obviously it won't be much light game because it's only 10 more mana or 15 more mana or 20 more mana, which is just not that meaningful. Um, but in the very early game, in the first, you know, 8 to 10 levels where you're laning and you maybe don't have Essence Reaver yet, uh, 30 more mana per spell should, which you should be able to use pretty reliably. Um, in general, you should be able to, you know, block some Mystic Shots or some Sona Qs or whatever. Um, you should be getting a decent amount of mana back out of this. It's going to be a really big buff to our laning phase. Um, I am not certain exactly how much we're going to get, um, you know, wave clear wise. Like if, if this is enough to make Sivir a permanent pushing champion with, with, um, you know, no recourse for her opponents because she now has infinite mana, we're probably not there, but, uh, this is definitely solid. This is definitely quite quite meaningful um and this will be felt next up is soraka another champion who is actually doing pretty well and is getting more buffs i know i said in the last video that i think it's correct for enchanters to sit above 50 percent but i don't think you should sit at 51 and then get buffed even more so i i am not a fan of this change i think i think it's okay with sivir um but i i'm kind of not a fan of this so it's 10 flat damage on the soraka q and then it's basically um half the damage taken by Astral Infusion if your Q uh, has landed. 
So here is uh, both halves of this uh, data. So here is the 10 flight damage on the queue. Uh, assuming you max it second, which is what um, support Soraka does. Um, this is where you're at. It is, um, you know, pretty meaningful damage bump, right? I mean, going up to 85 at rank one is a very high base damage. That's really going to be felt. It's really going to be useful. That is that is honestly pretty meaningful. So um, huge bump there. I mean, this is this is 1% win rate in and of itself. And then also the fact that um, the actual cost is halved if you land your Q on the W. This is the 10% of your max health, health cost. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's half what it was before. I mean, you're you're honestly barely going to feel this at this point. At this point, I'm not even sure why you have this scale anymore uh, to a certain degree because, like, do, do does the 17 health cost really matter? It, it, it doesn't, right? Like, at this point, literally at the highest possible point, it, it costs 18 health. Just make it zero. Honestly, right? Just just say when you land your Q, the W doesn't cost health anymore. Like that's what it should, that's what it should really be. Realistically, it should, right? Like it, it just that, that's what it should be. Uh, I mean, it's already that when you finally max out your Q. Just just do it, right? Like you know, it it, it made sense when it was like, oh, it's like a twenty percent cost reduction, or it's a forty percent cost reduction. Like, okay, yeah, sure, you know, it's 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 a nice benefit, but W is gonna hurt. Just, like, no, just 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 make it free, right? Um, don't actually because she's already going to be way too good. Um, she's already, you know, a very good performer. Um, this is a very big nerve, or sorry, a very, very big buff. Soraka is probably going to be, um, Soraka's probably going to take over solo queue at this point. Soraka is probably going to be um, an incredibly, an incredible go-to uh, support here. She's probably going to be a go-to top laner as well. I think 10 damage is actually pretty meaningful. Um, that's, that's, that's going to be felt a fair bit. Uh, she's actually a fairly similar win right top lane. It's over 51% there as well. And 10 damage in your primary ability that you, that you max first and spam. Um, yeah, I mean, Soraka's going to be OP next patch. And I, I, I don't know what this came through. Maybe there's data that I'm not seeing that she's like really bad somewhere else or something. But like, I think this is wrong. Um, next up, Tarek loses 5 health growth. And the bonus armor scaling on the W is going down. Um, again, this is the kind of thing where like, I really don't see why it needs to scale. Like, okay, yeah, 10 becoming 20%, I kind of saw. Uh, it, it. This is the thing where it actually doubled the armor growth. Um, and yet also, it was a fraction percent, which is kind of annoying. Um, now going 10 to 14% of Tarek's armor, like, do I really care that I'm giving someone four more armor when I have 100? No, I don't. This could just not scale and it would be fine, honestly. Or if you wanted it to be 15%, it could be. I don't know. Like, again, I, I, I don't like half a percent because it's so silly. At the same time, I also don't like only 1% growth. It's just like, why? It just, I, I don't know. It, it's really, really minor. Like, it's a, super, it's, a, it's a really small thing to nitpick. But I think it's actually pretty useless. Um, health growth, though, down by five certainly matters. So here is Tarek. Tarek, again, another very strong performer. Totally, totally supportive of him, of him being nerfed. Very, very strong champion. Um, health down pretty meaningfully. Right down to ninety six percent of his health total from before. Obviously, this guy's gonna have um, all the standard, you know, uh, health growth relic shield items. So he's gonna have more than this in real terms. But that's true for any champion in general. Where, um, yeah, he's gonna really have three k health. So he's, um, you know, in losing eighty five health, it's not four percent. It's three percent. It's like yeah, okay, sure. Uh, that's fine though. It's still eighty five health. Still a nerf. Um, as far as the actual armor, uh, this is assuming you're maxing it second after putting two points in Q. So your second point ability comes in on 10 and you're done maxing it at, um, 14, I think. Um, and yeah, it is, uh, again, it's, it's about 6% of Tarek's armor less. He scales to like 90 ish. So it's about five to six armor. Um, He has six armor less on himself. He has six armor less on his target. Um, his personal armor is is this. His target's armor is going to be a bit lower than this. Um, but ultimately, yeah, uh, this is a champion who uh, is going to lose some win rate. It's going to be pretty small. I want to point out that's, that um, scaling nerfs to supports also tend to be less valuable. So again, the first nine levels of Tarek's life, this W nerf doesn't even exist. Uh, I want to point out that in solo queue, the most common skill orders are simply maxing it last. They actually they actually finish maxing Q first and they max W at the very, very end. So for a solo queue Tarek, it's the first 13 levels are the same. Um, well, I guess on, on this side. Um, so you're really not going to feel this kind of stuff. And then even then, like the first point of difference is barely 1%. 
Um, so it, this is not a very big deal, right? This 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 thing is pretty small. This is somewhat meaningful, but again, you're ending most games by level 13 or something. So it's, you know, 55 less health. Um, pretty small. He'll be above 52% probably at the end of the day. But, I mean, it's good to see. I think this is still an appropriately sized nerf to try to find 1%. And I'm I'm not I'm not mad about it. Like I think I think this is a correctly sized nerf, and I'm I think it's cool. Uh, TF gets two attack damage and half an armor, as well as 50 mana cost off his destiny. I'm glad this is finally another ultimate that costs 100 mana. Silly to keep it this way for so long. Uh, TF tends to have very low base mana. At least last I looked, I'm pretty sure that's still true. Uh, so this is actually even more meaningful for someone like TF than it means for say like Anivia, where they have the pool to spare 50 mana. Um, even with like blue cards refilling and stuff, that the base mana pool itself is still pretty small. Uh, but yeah, the attack damage up by two, the armor up by a half. Here is this. Um, actually, a non-trivial amount of attack damage. Uh, two AD in the early game certainly does help last hitting. Um, is going to be felt to a certain degree. Um, yeah, it just helps, right? This is just like strictly helpful. Uh, this helps his trading pattern. Keep in mind, he actually auto attacks champions as part of his combos, right? By landing gold card. Oftentimes, you can like gold card Q and then auto attack a second time, maybe a third time. He gets free attack speed in the kit through his E. This is actually not complete garbage this this actually does matter a fair bit he's one of the champions that auto attacks the most of any mages uh, as far as the armor gain yeah it's half a point of armor it is 0.4 to 0.3 percent more physical durability it's not a lot but i'm glad i'm always glad anytime we see this rounding i'm always happy to see this i'm always absolutely happy to see this uh because it makes uh transcribing these stats later on um down the line when i'm you know when there's further updates we're doing like attack damage scaling on tf it's like well good thing it's already 52 and there's not a thousandth place on the attack damage always fan to see it um, good stuff. I want to point out that, that TF's armor is, I think, 3.15. He gains 15 hundredths of an armor point per level. I don't think they needed to go and, like, make that 3.5 or whatever. Like, I think I think it's fine the way they, you know, it's all landed. Um, just, just a very odd amount of armor to gain is all. Um, and again, champion that actually is doing pretty well, right? Above 50% win rate. Um, decently solid champion. Didn't need a ton of help. Didn't get a ton of help. Uh, but he's going to gain 1% or something off this. Um, yeah, and, you know, we'll end in a pretty solid spot where he probably gets some play. Uh, he's fairly rare. Like, he's a below 1% ban rate in every elo, but hey, good to know. All right, so next up we have Udir, who is getting now these three changes. Again, happy we have the rounding. Happy that we have the rounding. The action miracle changes do not matter. But hey, even though they could have, uh, so like, mana regen technically went down by 6 thousandths of a mana so keep in mind right um every second udir would gain one one thousandth of a point of mana which means it would take one thousand seconds for udir to gain one mana that was removed so again not meaningful at all a thousand seconds takes like what if it's 60 seconds in a minute uh 10 minutes is 600 so in in about 50 minutes this would give him one mana i that's my, my rough napkin math here yeah this th this is not a nerf don't don't you dare consider it a nerf it's just a good rounding good job um base mana up by 0.6 cool that does more than this ever will <laughs> yeah they could have rounded to just a flat 270 honestly whatever uh i mean probably would have liked to see a flat 270 but that felt like more of a nerf uh i mean whatever right um, base health up by 0.6, the biggest buff we've had so far. Wow, we're getting there. And then five movement speed. Um, okay. Yeah. And five movement speed actually matters, right? Um, five movement speed. So basically, um, champions have anywhere usually between, um, 325 and 355 move speed. This puts them at the second best movement speed class in the game, which I think is fair for champions like Udyr, who has to run at everyone to do anything good. Um, people are already maxing bear stance second just for the move speed more than anything else. Um, because they need it so darn badly. Uh, you could see people maybe not quite push into bear stance quite as much because they have some more moves to fall back on. They don't need it quite as badly. Um, I don't think people will necessarily redouble their efforts to put points in bear because the other points are good as well. Um, but, uh, yep, this is definitely meaningful. It's definitely going to be felt. Good job, Udyr. A bit stronger of a champion. We're in there. I know the like last round of changes way back when that buff Phoenix and Nerf Tiger um, left him in a spot where I mean he was fine-ish, but um, wasn't really, you know. I mean Tiger Uder was like absurdly good before, and it stopped being so because of how big the nerfs were. But this is where we ended up. Um, that's it for the patch rundown. Honestly, um, spent a few minutes ranting. Hopefully those were enjoyable or whatever. But yeah, I mean it's it's you know a dozen or so one percent win rate changes where I am really not a fan of this rock buff, and I don't think Sivir super needed it, but whatever. Uh, TF didn't super need it either. 
Um, would have probably liked to see some more of those 56% win rate champions get some 1% win rate buffs, but that's where we're at. Either way, thank you all for watching. I appreciate y'all very much, and I'll see you next time.